morning. Uh, Pastor Chris here. Today is day two of our online daily devotional on prayer. And I um, uh, hope you enjoyed yesterday's devotional. Pastor Tim did a great job with that. And I just want to remind you to like, comment, and share these videos and spread a little bit of hope to people that might be um, needing it right now. Um, today we're kind of continuing in our discussion about prayer, what it means to be people of prayer, and, and things that we can learn from God's Word about prayer and how important it is to our lives. And so, you know, in true searchlight fashion, today is kind of about living and loving like Jesus. Uh, and today's devotion, if you're going along in the YouVersion Bible app, it's about the fact that Jesus prayed. Um, that even though he was the Son of God, even though he certainly uh, understood the plan and the reason that his Father sent him here, um, he knew that he had to keep a daily connection with his Father. And all throughout um, the Gospels, we see Jesus praying. We see him you know, praying before and after he healed people. We see him breaking away by himself to get quiet time. Uh, even hanging on the cross, Jesus was praying for people. And as I was reading through the different passages of Scripture in the devotion, uh, I, what really struck me was John 17. It, the entire chapter is a prayer that Jesus prays for his disciples. It's really powerful. It, go ahead and read it um, while you're going through this devotion. But um, I, what I did was I was looking back to like starting in chapter 13, um, there's this whole conversation between Jesus and his disciples, and it really is like kind of a bleak conversation. I mean, Jesus is saying like, the time has come for me to fulfill why I came, and these are some things that are gonna play out, and I wanna challenge you to go back and read from John 13, but here's some of the things that are happening. In John 13, Jesus is washing his disciples' feet, and he kind of predicts uh, uh, Peter's denial. He, he predicts a betrayal that he's going to go through. And he has this whole conversation and time with his disciples while, he, while he's kind of preparing them. And he's showing them what real servanthood looks like. And then in John 14, he talks about the fact that he is the way to the Father. He says, listen, don't be troubled. But he's reminding them that he is the way to the Father, and he also says that the Father's gonna send the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus is kind of reiterating, listen guys, uh, I'm serving you, and, uh, and you also need to know that I am the only way to the Father. And then in John 15, he digs deeper into the, I am the vine and you're the branches. It basically says, listen guys, don't forget, apart from me, you're not gonna be able to do anything of eternal value. Um, and then he, in John 15, he talks about the world hating them. I mean, think about how tough this conversation is. The world hated me, and they're going to hate you, right? And then in John 16, he says, listen, I'm telling you all these things, guys, so that when trouble happens, when it gets difficult, you won't abandon your faith. I'm telling you these things now so that when they happen, you won't run away and you won't abandon your faith. And he kind of concludes John 16 by talking about, listen, your sadness is going to turn to joy. Don't fear. Don't be dismayed. Don't run away from your faith. Your sadness is going to turn into joy. And then after all of this stuff, really difficult things that he's having this heart-to-heart -heart with his disciples, he then decides to turn and say a full chapter of a prayer. And I, I think, you know, there were a lot of times when Jesus went by himself to pray. Um, there were many times where he just had to get away from his disciples and everyone else where he could just talk to his father. But in John 17, I think it's interesting that Jesus prays out loud in front of his disciples this whole thing. It's almost like there were things he wanted them to hear that he was praying to his father. And um, so for the rest of this talk, I just want to lay out four things that Jesus prayed things that he prayed about and prayed for in his prayer in John 17. You can, you can read it for yourself. But in verses 1 through 3, I think Jesus was kind of affirming um, the mission, right? Listen to what he says. He says, uh, it says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. For you have given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one who sent you to earth. So first off, Jesus 
prays this prayer affirming the mission. This is, Lord, Father, this is why you sent me and I did it. Then he goes on in verses 6 through 8 to affirm his disciples. L listen what he says in verses 6 through 8. He says, I have revealed you to the ones you gave me from, the, uh, from this world. They were always yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you, for I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it and know that I came from you, and they believe you sent me. So now Jesus is affirming his disciples. He's praying right in front of them, Father, this is what they are and how great they are and how much I love them. And then he goes on to pray for them and you can read it for yourself but he prays a prayer of protection over them he says i'm not praying for the world i'm praying for them and i'm praying that you would protect them that you would keep them safe from the evil one and then in verses 20 to 21 he prays for us which i think is so awesome i mean when i say us i mean me and you in 2020 check it out he says he says i'm praying not only for these disciples but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. That's, that's me and you. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you, and may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. Isn't that amazing that Jesus actually, before he went to the cross, he prayed for you. He prayed for me. He prayed for everyone who would come to faith in him. And then in verses 22 to 24, Jesus prays for unity. I mean, he prays for not just those disciples, but everyone who would come after them, including us, that there would be unity, and he prays for our future. Um, guys, you know, there's things that happen when we pray. We say, why, excuse me, why do we have to pray? Well, we live in love like Jesus. Jesus made prayer, communicating with his Father, so important, and he did it not only on his own and in private, but he did it in front of his disciples so that we could learn. There's things that happen when we pray, and this is why it's so important. Number one, when we pray, the mission is affirmed. How many of you, you know that you've been guilty sometimes of getting sidetracked, getting going on your own agenda, getting roped into all the other things that are going on in the world, and we can become so distracted. And when we pray, when we settle down, it's like when Jesus reaffirmed the mission, that he did what he was sent to do. When we pray daily, it reminds us why we're here. It reminds us of the mission that we're on. Secondly, when we pray, we get affirmed as his disciples. I don't know about you, but when I spend time with God, no matter what I'm feeling, if I'm worried, if I'm stressed, if I'm angry, if I'm frustrated, whatever it is, when I stop and slow down and I take a few minutes just to, to read my Bible and to pray and spend time in God's presence, I feel reaffirmed. I feel that when I say to God, Lord, I'm not enough. I feel like I can't do it. I'm angry. I'm frustrated. God just in his own way through his Holy Spirit reaffirms me as his disciple. Just like Jesus prayed how proud he was and how grateful he was for his disciples, we get reaffirmed. I think when we pray, we come under the protection of God, just like Jesus prayed to protect us. You know, he didn't pray that they wouldn't lose their lives on this side of eternity. Jesus knew that they were going to suffer, but he was really praying for their souls to be protected from the evil one. And when we pray, we come under his protection. And lastly, when we pray, um, the stuff that's in our hearts that kind of takes away the unity, um, the things that the enemy wants to get in there and, and tear us apart, it's... It gives the Holy Spirit time to work on us, to bring conviction, to bring correction, um, to remind us that the greatest weapon we have in this world uh, when it comes to preaching the gospel is the unity of the church. If there's one way that the enemy can tear down uh, the, the effective work of the church in the world, it's by tearing down the unity. And so guys, why is prayer important? Because it reaffirms the mission and it builds us up and reaffirms us and God does that when we pray. It reminds us that we come under his protection and that we need to be unified. Hey, guys, Jesus prayed. We need to pray and we need to do it every single day day. So let me pray for you, and I'll pray that you have a great day. Lord, be with us today. I pray for everyone who's watching this devotional, that you would remind us of the mission and the reason that we're called to live in love like you. Uh, re remind us how proud you are of us and how much you love us and how much you have plans for us. And God, protect us and keep us unified today. I pray in your name.
Amen. Guys, have a great day today, and we'll see you tomorrow for day three of our devotion on prayer.